This is the London Eye question solution. So it tells us the London Eye is a tourist attraction designed to give passengers a panoramic view over London. The giant wheel completes two revolutions in one hour. Each capsule moves with a constant speed of 0.26 meters per second as it follows a circular path. Calculate the radius of this circular path. So we know the speed, 0.26, we know the number of revolutions in a period of time, so we can work out the angular speed from that omega. So we're going to start from um, v equals r omega. I'll just pull that in from over here. My apologies for it being over in the corner here. That's just the way the questions turned out for me. So v equals r omega. Uh, we know that uh, V will be 0.26, but we're going to rearrange that to say that R equals V over omega. And we're going to say that omega being 2 pi over T, well, omega in this case, uh, 2 pi over t, but we do two revolutions in one hour, so it's 2 times 2 pi over the number of seconds in an hour. So if we then stick in our r equals v 0.26 divided by omega, which would be times 60 times 60 divided by 4 pi we'll end up with um, not point I'm sorry 74 meters give or take so now that's not exactly the answer, that is the answer to two sig figs. I will use my raw answer then when I come down here and I work out the magnitude of the resultant force. So here I'm going to say F is mv squared over R. Uh, I know V, I know R from up here, you know, 0.26 by 60 by 60 over 4 pi. So if I stick in my numbers to that, I will get 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 2 newtons. And it says, what is, it, what is the direction? Well, of course, the direction is towards the center of the circle. Then here we have figure two shows the free body force diagram for the man when the capsule is at position A. Let's have a look at where position A is. Position A is here. So looking at this, we're saying the central petal force is to the left. And we would have the weight of the man acting down. Let's look at the diagram. So we have little arrow to the left, we have force Q down and we have force P. Now, force Q is clearly the weight of the man, so uh, I'd be careful to say the weight of the man in case there's any ambiguity, but there would be ambiguity if you just said the weight. It is the weight of the man. Uh, and P, well, there's an upwards force on the man, what is that? That is the reaction of the floor of the capsule. On the man. <clears throat> and again, I'm being careful to say uh, the, the nature and source of the the force so when the man is at position a there is no resultant vertical force acting on him in this position p equals q in magnitude explain why the man continues 
his motion in a circle? Well, he clearly does, so there must be uh, a resultant force towards the center of the circle. Uh, and why? How? Due to friction. If you imagine the floor of the capsule being really highly polished or frozen, and you're standing in smooth shoes, smooth soled shoes, then there is no friction. And what will happen is as the capsule is coming round, the lack of centripetal force will mean you will move out to the edge of the capsule. You'll, you'll be leaning against, pushing against the wall of the capsule. That will provide your centripetal force. And of course, if there was no wall, you would fall off. So uh, it is due to friction here. Explain why force Q must be larger than force P when the capsule is at position B. Well, again, if we look at position B, He's still performing a circle here, so there must be a resultant force towards the center of the circle for him to perform the circle. And so the force inwards, which is Q, has to be greater than the force outwards, which means the reaction must get less. The other way to think about that is, as the capsule comes round past the 12 o'clock position, the floor is falling away from the man as it comes right here. The floor is getting lower. And so uh, there will be a small reduction in the reaction of the floor on him because the floor is moving away from him. But either way, whichever way you want to look at it, uh, there must be a resultant force towards the center of the circle so Q is greater than P <clears throat> uh, and you can say that uh, Q is less uh, sorry P is less uh, because the floor is falling away from them or uh, only Q can, sorry, only P can get less because Q is fixed because it is the mass of the man times gravity. But there it is.